welcome back, Fred in the Shed 1. And today we're going to have a closer look at this little handheld transceiver from a company called Oliwiz. Now, Oliwiz isn't a company that instantly springs to mind here in the UK, of course, China based, of course, but uh, selling a range of small, fairly cheap handheld transceivers. So, before we get into this video, let's have a little look at the company. The model that we're going to be looking at today is the HTD. 826, a little small 16 channel UHF 2 watt transceiver. Now I'll leave a link to the uh, company's website in the description. It's worth a look, they've got a small range of uh, sort of transceivers that they're currently uh, selling and shipping over to, to the UK and uh, yeah pretty reasonable prices as well, you know sort of uh, not not so much sort of Yesu Kenwood end of the market but uh, more down in the familiar kind of Bofang type. And do you know what? I think it's really quite refreshing to see another company enter the sort of more budget end of handheld radios. I mean, I've got absolutely nothing against Bofung. I've got quite a few of their radios. Um, you know, they're pretty good and everything. But it's just nice that, uh, you know, you've got some competition. They've sort of have had the playing field all to themselves. So go and check the uh, Oliwiz website. You'll see that they do other products as well as just the one I'm looking at today. And uh, this one is particularly nice. This is a dual bander. This is a 2 meter and a 70 centimeter sort of trend transceiver with uh, an LCD display. Also I notice, although there's no stock on the web page at the moment, but I notice uh, they've listed CB radios and of course that's something that interests me immensely. I'll be very interested to see what type of uh, CB radios they'll be stocking in the future. I also had a look around the internet and found that uh, Oliwiz have a Facebook page. That might be a way of contacting the company directly. You might get a quicker response sometimes if you've got uh, any questions? So that's all well and good, but what about the big question? You know, how much are these radios selling for in the UK? So straight over to Amazon, and they're selling on Amazon Prime for £40 delivered, and that's for a pair, so about £20 per sort of transceiver. So we're well into the sort of Bofung sort of price range here. I did go over and look on eBay, a little bit more expensive on eBay, about £25 a handheld, and at the moment they're only selling in sort of matched pairs. I couldn't see a deal for a uh, single unit, but I imagine that will sort of follow on later. Okay, let's uh, have a look what's in the box itself. So it's a pretty sort of kind of generic box, the type you get with these sort of sort of radios. Um, they sort of come the same, but at least you get a box. I mean, sometimes you just get them in uh, sort of jiffy bags now. So firstly, we'll have a look at the instructions. Now, I always read the instructions. I'm a little bit older than some of you watching this, but I think that clear instructions are actually quite useful. And uh, yeah, absolutely no problem. Loads of illustrations here, loads of diagrams. Uh, pretty good English, one or two you know, small spelling mistakes, but absolutely nothing to sort of worry about. And uh, yeah, everything sort of, uh, sort of laid out quite nice. Specifications for this radio, well, it's a two watt maximum uh, power transceiver. It transmits on 406 to 470 megahertz. That conveniently covers the 70 centimeter 430 to 440 band and also the uh, 446 PMR band. Also included is a base charger. Pretty simple thing, got a little LED there to tell you the level of charge. But I do quite like this one because it comes with a USB connection lead. Yes, you know, I haven't got the lead terminating at one of these lethal little two pin sort of China plugs that go into a crappy transformer that can potentially electrocute. You know, this one has got a five volt, very, very safe USB connector. So you're able to sort of charge this by a phone charger or possibly just sort of put it into your laptop. And we've got the uh, battery. 3.7 1800 mAh, and uh, yeah, straight away, you know, this feels quite sort of reasonably heavy. Um, it's always a test of a battery, really, sort of the weight of it. You know, some of these batteries go incredibly sort of light. This one's got quite a nice weight to it, seems to be sort of quite nicely made. You've got the four kind of connectors there on the bottom that will slide into the uh, sort of base charger. So uh, then we have the little sort of belt clip. Now this will connect to the back of the radio. There's there's a metal bar at the back and you've got two Phillips screws that you will take out and that screws in the radio and the, yeah, it feels quite nicely made. And the spring itself feels quite strong so that should hold on a belt no problem. Moving on, we've got the little rubber ducky antenna there and that's got a standard SMA connector which is sort of quite good. Now on the bottom here it says that the antenna tunes from 450 to 470 although the radio is listed at tuning at 406. 470 so maybe a slight mismatch there but I wouldn't have thought that'll make uh, much difference for the 446 band what I intend to use the radio for that'll be absolutely fine 
So moving on, we've got the HTD826 uh, transceiver itself. Now straight out the sort of packet, you uh, looking at the chassis of it, it does have this kind of rather sort of uh, cast aluminium look to it. I do suspect that it is in fact plastic. I don't think this is aluminium, but uh, it see it's not nicely made. It looks quite nicely sort of screwed, uh, screwed together. Now, one thing that I like to do, which I'm sure manufacturers absolutely hate, is the squeeze test. Here, yeah, I like to get hold of the radio and really give it a good squeeze and a good sort of tug here and there. And please to say, this one's no creaks, no groans at all. Some of the sort of other cheaper radios do tend to sort of complain at this test, but uh, no, absolutely, absolutely fine. So that's all good. So on the front here, you've got the uh, speaker, of course, and then you've got a small little condenser microphone. On the right hand side of the radio are your COM port settings. I'm really pleased to note that they are using the standard Kenwood sort of two pin system. This is used throughout all of the Bofang range, so all of the cheap accessories like speaker mics and things should fit this no problem. So on the other side, you've got the push to talk button. That's quite nice sort of tactile distinctive click. And then there's two additional buttons. Uh, the top button is pre-programmed to be a squelch cut on monitor and uh, the bottom button is also can be programmed to be a scan button but we can look at that in the software and we'll program them accordingly on the top of the radio no torch they're missing the flashlight oh, i don't know if i missed that or not um, other than that you've got the volume control there and then you've got a 16 sort of clicky channel selector and it does talk to you this radio and we'll have a listen to that just now And there you go, and, and quite refreshing that we've got a clear male voice instead of a little uh, Chinese girl screaming the channel numbers at you. But it's a useful feature, especially if you're going to put the radio on a belt clip and you can't see the channel indicator. So I think that's about it for in the box. There is, of course, the obligatory uh, lanyard wrist strap. I mean, does anyone really use these? Do you really want this thing dangling from your wrist? But it's there if you want it. But one thing that is missing from the box is a software USB connection lead. I really would hope they would sort of include that so you can program the radio, but we'll come to that in just a second. Now, if you know about these radios, one thing that is very visually apparent is how close this radio resembles a Bofeng 888S. So I thought I'd just bring one into the shot here just to come sort of compare it. I'm not going to do a direct comparison between the two radios. Not at this stage. In the future, I might do some testing, but not at the moment. But uh, as you can sort of see, yes, it does visually uh, look very similar to the AAAS, but it's kind of like being put in, in a photocopier and in large, it's a lot more chunky. It's a slightly bigger size, uh, both height and sort of width, and also weight. It does feel certainly sort of more substantial in the hand. And I've got to be honest, it just feels that little bit better. Certainly the uh, sort of switches on the side, the PTT, um, you know, I, I think it's a bit more tactile. It just has a slightly better quality feel. So I'm really sorry, Bofung, but uh, yeah, Ollie Wiz here have certainly got the upper hand when it comes to uh, this style of radio. Now, other than the 42 watts output, one of the advantages over a standard PMR radio is the fact you've got the SMA aerial connector, so you can change the antenna to your heart's content, and you might have some antennas that you want to try, or even if you go on eBay and uh, get one of these sort of cheap imitation Nagoa antennas that I've tried before, and I find they do work. They do sort of increase the range. One thing you are going to have to send off for before you can sort of program the radio is that all-important USB Connection lead. Now the good news is here that the radio does use the standard two pin Kenwood connector which means there are bountiful uh, connection leads available on Amazon and on eBay. Any of the uh, Bofung range of connection leads will fit. Now I did check the Oliwiz website to see if they supplied a lead as an optional extra but unfortunately they don't seem to. They seem to do the uh, earphones and speaker mics but uh, no connection leads so it's going to be uh, ebay for you there and uh, generally you know if you're in the uk if you want one uk uh, bought it's about sort of five pounds and if you want to wait sort of a few weeks from china then uh, you know less than sort of uh, three pounds so it's not too expensive but try and make sure that you get the original bofung branded lead Right, I think that uh, covers the first look at this radio, and I want to move on now to the programming. Now, I'm going to be programming these radios to work on the PMR446 megahertz band. If you're interested in using the 70 centimeter ham band, then uh, I'm going to sort of suggest that you go off and check out Lewis's video from Ringway Manchester because he covered this part of the programming really really well much better than I could do so I will leave a link to his video 
in the description and I suggest you pop over and have a look at that. Now, as I'm making this video in June 2018, the uh, 826 Oliwiz Radio is not currently supported in Chirp. Now, I know a lot of you like to sort of use Chirp, so we're going to be using the software that is supplied on the Oliwiz main site. And uh, you simply find that in the drop down menu in the support section. Now, one of the comments that I always get when I make these handheld videos is people say, well, why should I bother reprogramming the radios? I've got a pair of radios. They work absolutely fine, sort of together. No need to reprogram them. Now, what you need to understand is that, and this applies to all radios, not just Oliwiz radios, Bofung radios, all in this sector, is that the radios are supplied with a variety of test frequencies in the factory. This is purely to sort of make sure they test the sort of modulation, they test the output, things like that. It doesn't necessarily mean that these frequencies are legal to use in your country. So here's what I pulled off the radio. This is what the Oliwiz is supplied with out of the box. And uh, what is interesting, if you look down at channel 16 here in the left-hand corner, you'll see that it's uh, set to 469 megahertz. Now, you've got to bear in mind, this is a 2-watt transceiver. It's quite powerful, and uh, when you're walking around, you're going to be sort of transmitting probably well over sort of one mile, possibly uh, sort of two and a half, three kilometers even if you're out in the open. So you want to know what kind of frequencies that you've got in the radio. And as it turns out, this frequency is actually a federal band. So this is not something that you want to play about with. So I say again, it's really, really important that you spend the time, buy yourself a cheap lead and you spend the time to uh, wipe this radio and reprogram it with legal frequencies. On the subject of legality, I do have to make this notice before we carry on with the video. Now, here in the UK, if you want to stay entirely legal on the PMR446 band, then you have to have a regulated approved transceiver. And the restrictions are that your radio should not transmit at any more than 0.5 of a watt. That's half a watt. And it also must have a fixed antenna. So these type of radios what we're using here do not fit that criteria, in which case you are in fact breaking the law. Now in reality, you have to be pretty unlucky, to be honest, to uh, be caught. I don't know anyone that's actually had any of these radios confiscated or been prosecuted. Um, I suppose if you're going to a function that is a high security risk, like say the recent royal wedding, for example, something like that, and you're standing there talking into a transceiver, then you might attract the attention of the police and uh, they might be interested in your equipment. But as I say, as I know, I don't know of anyone that has uh, had any trouble whatsoever using these radios on the correct frequencies. Okay, we've got that bit out of the way. Now, moving on to the software itself, the Oliwiz uh, programming software. Um, I actually found this software quite refreshing to use. I had no problems at all in being able to uh, program my radio. Now, the first thing that you need to do is you need to go into the setup menu there and you just need to confirm that the radio is connected to the certain COM port. Mine just went by default to COM port 4 and uh, I clicked OK so that the computer then knows that the radio is connected. The next step is to clear all those unwanted test frequencies from the radio's memory. So you go to edit there and then you click OK to wipe and clear the radio's memory. What I do next, because I don't want to sit here for 20 minutes putting all this information in by hand, is I go onto Google and I Google to find the correct PMR446 frequencies. Then all you need to do is select the first one, uh, right click select copy, move over to the programming software, click the first transmit frequency box, and then click paste. And pleasingly, the software is quite intuitive because when you click on the receiving box, it automatically fills in all the uh, other data to the uh, settings that you need for the uh, PMR band. So a good thumbs up there to OliWiz for uh, saving you having to do all that manually. And then you just simply do it for the rest of the channels you want to program. Now, of course, there are legally 16 uh, PMR channels now in the UK. I'm just going to use eight for the, this example, but you get the idea. OK, right. Once you've got the uh, frequencies put into the radio, let's have a look at the optional features. Um, this is where we can sort of perhaps program those sort of two buttons and uh, make other adjustments. So you just click on the optional features menu. 
So right, what you're seeing on the page here, this is how I've set up my radio and uh, you might want to sort of like copy this accordingly. This works fine on the uh, sort of PMR band. There's certain things in here we're not really needed to worry about on 446, but uh, I'll just quickly go through it. So you see the first option there, you've got timeout timer. This is when the radio will cut out after a certain amount of time when you're transmitting. Now I've set this up to the maximum of 600 minutes because I don't think that's uh, necessary. The one below that we're not going to worry about. And then we've got the squelch level. The radio is default set to five. I think that's quite a bit high. I always set my squelch at sort of the lowest uh, one and that way you won't blank out any weak signals. The mic sensitivity, I always keep it at normal. You can sort of turn it up or down. Uh, next is the voice actuation there. The, what language would you prefer? Well, obviously you've got English and Chinese. Well, I'm English, so we're choosing English for that. I've also clicked the battery save option. I think that's quite useful. I've also turned off the uh, bleep. I don't want it to bleep every time that I do a key press. Below that is Vox. What is Vox? Well, Vox is voice activation. You can set the radio so you don't need to press the PTT. That's when you talk, the radio will automatically transmit. It can be useful, especially if you're driving. You don't want to have to touch the radio. Um, but uh, personally, I uh, switched it off because I find that a little bit too uh, invasive. Over on the right hand side at the top, the PTT, I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to leave that completely as, as it is because it seems to work. And the next thing I want to change is the uh, key key arrangement. This is, these are the two little buttons above the PTT there. You can then sort of program these to make do certain functions. Uh, personally, I think the top one I set to monitor, which means that breaks the squelch. So you can hold that in and listen out for very distant stations. And then finally, the uh, second one, set that to scan, which is quite useful just to sort of scan through the channels. And uh, that's about it. That's all I uh, do on my radio. And uh, I just click close after that and it's set. So normally when I'm programming these little uh, PMI radios, when I, when I click send to radio, this is where you sort of hold your breath. I have had problems <laughs> with both on, uh, programming software, but absolutely fine with this Oliwiz stuff. Uh, went straight into the radio, no problem at all, no error messages, no issues, jobs are good. So that's it, I've set up both my handsets to use on the uh, PMI function. And uh, the next thing now is to move on to the testing. Okay, right, this is the testing part. Now, those of you that have seen my handheld videos before on Fred in the Shed, you know the uh, setup. Nothing particularly fancy at all. And, of course, we are testing these on the PMR446 band. Um, now, if you take this uh, this radio, for example, if you take it's a 2-watt transceiver, if you took this up to uh, some higher ground, I'm sure you could get absolutely miles on one of these, um, you know, no problem whatsoever. But, of course, I'm in a built-up suburban area, and I kind of feel that this is probably what these radios are going to be used for. You know, people going camping, fishing trips, things like that, maybe car-to-car -car comms, stuff like that. A lot of people uh, will be using these in a kind of, like, friends and family environment, and that's how I'm going to test it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to set this one up here just in the upstairs of the house and uh, I'll be going out and I'll be walking out approximately just over one sort of uh, quarter one quarter of one mile and I'll be transmitting back to the radio and we can then hear the uh, sort of report and then I'll go on a little bit further to the uh, sort of motorway bridge which is quite challenging because there's quite a lot of infrastructure around there quite a lot of traffic things like that and that is just under the half mile point from the QTH here and once again I'll be transmitting uh, back to the radio so that will be sort of uh, Oliwiz handheld to Oliwiz handheld standard uh, antennas nothing uh, nothing fancy and uh, we'll see what comes out we'll check the audio and uh, we'll check the signal see uh, see how it works and uh, yep we'll go from so there we are at the uh, first test point i say not far just about probably quarter mile from the house um quite quite a noisy environment though close to uh, traffic houses things like that two watt transceiver should have absolutely no trouble at this range whatsoever so just going to call back just going to call back there to the uh to the other unit. Yep, test one, test one, quarter of a mile, quarter of a mile on the Oliwiz radio there. Audio test, one, two, one, two, one, two, audio. Yep, test one, test one, quarter of a mile, quarter of a mile on the Oliwiz radio there. Audio test, one, two, one, two, one, two, audio. So we are at the second location, we have a noisy one up at the uh, Motorway bridge, approximately half a mile, give or take, suburban location. Um, little Bofong T1 struggle. Someone's come back. 
Little bow flung T1 struggled um, at this range, but uh, hopefully I won't interrupt this guy's conversation. We're going to give a test. Yeah, okay, audio test, audio test, the Ollie Whiz here, uh, the motorway bridge here, about half a mile, half a mile back from the QTH. Audio, one, two, audio, one, two, test, test, test. Right, we'll just do one final test. Uh, obviously, there was a couple of guys on, on channel there, and uh, just in case they went over my transmission. So we're in the car here, so about half a mile out, actually sitting inside the car. So here we go. Yeah, audio test there, final one on the Ollie Whiz, about half a mile uh, out, sitting in the car. So uh, one, two, one, two, one, two, audio test. Well, there you go. That's the end of the testing, and I think they did really, really well. Uh, audio absolutely fine on that short range urban test. And you know what? You know, Ollie was there, the new kid on the block, a name that we've not heard much about in the UK. But I think at uh, this end of the low end of the market. I think both phones have got a little bit to be uh, to be worried about because although they are just very fractionally more expensive than the equivalent both phone uh, sort of model, they are of nicer quality. They are sort of uh, constructed that, just that little bit better, and they seem to perform really well. Okay, we're up to the 20 minute mark, so I'm going to bring this one to a close. So I will leave the OliWiz website link in the description if you want to go and check that out. I'll also leave the link to these radios on Amazon Prime, which is currently the best price that, uh, as, as it stands, that's 40 UK pounds for two handsets. Um, I'll, leave, I'll link Lewis's uh, video in there as well if you want to program these on the amateur radio band, and that will sort of help you uh, do that. But as for now, uh, let me know, you know, I've got these radios. I say, if you want to see some more testing on these, maybe I'll put it up against uh, the AAAS or something like that. And uh, I'll try and ask around, see if I can get a real person on the other end <laughs> to give me, an, give me a sort of uh, a proper radio report instead of just talking back to myself. But uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see some more of these, uh, these radios. And also, I'll be watching the, um, the website with interest because I say they are listing that uh, they are going to start stocking CB radios and I'll be very interested to perhaps test their uh, range of CB radios. But as for now, as always, cheers, thank you very much for uh, sticking with the video. There will be a few pop-ups that end uh, come up at the end of the screen like they normally are. Um, so please feel free to go off and watch them if you want to see a bit more uh, thread in the shed. Uh, also that subscribe button of course um, if you want to sort of see more videos that uh, I do. But as for now, as always, stay safe and I'll catch you all on the next one.